I hereby resign my membership in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, effective immediately, and request you to remove my name permanently from your membership records. I recognize that this cancels the effects of my baptism and confirmation and the opportunity for eternal life. I willingly accept these consequences. start here. I started with hope and faith. Faith is knowing the sun will rise, light in each new day. Faith is knowing the Lord will hear my prayers each time I pray. Faith is like a little seed, if planted it will grow. Faith is a swelling within my heart, when I do right I know. And that faith turned to certainty. Dear Heavenly Father, I know this church is true. I know that Joseph Smith is a true prophet. I know the Book of Mormon is true. I know it's true. I know it's true. I know it's true. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I was six the first time I talked to God. I asked him to make sure my parents didn't die in a car crash. I did this at least five times a day. It was the first thing I did when I woke up and the last thing I did before sleeping. I was convinced that if I didn't, my parents would die and it would be my fault. See, my mom had decided it would be good for us to go to church, something for the soul, a pre-Sunday brunch activity. My dad had been raised in the Mormon church, so we chose that one. But all in all, it was pretty arbitrary. The church we went to had scratch and beige walls covered in what felt like burlap. There was always organ music playing. There were two green hymn books in every pew. The pianos had extra thick keypads just so you could never play too loud. And at some point, we were told about the Holy Ghost and that if you ever heard a message from him, you had to listen, or else. So when I started having these incessant anxious thoughts of my parents dying, I was convinced it was the Holy Ghost warning me to take action. God was fierce and powerful, and I had only the power of prayer to protect my parents. So I prayed, and prayed, and prayed. Dear Heavenly Father, Please bless them. My parents will get home safely from work. Please help them to be safe. If they do, I promise I will be good for the rest of my life. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. The summer before fifth grade, my dad told me we were moving, and I was furious. I had been accepted to the gifted and talented program, I had a lot of friends, and I was popular with the nerds. But I was nerd popular, and that was more than enough. So moving felt like the end of the world. We ended up in a tiny town in North Idaho, and I started fifth grade with a bunch of strange kids who didn't need any more friends and who I was too shy to talk to anyway. But the church there, that was the only place that made sense. It had the same scratchy walls that were too uncomfortable to lean on during meetings the same organ music piping through the intercoms, the same green hymn books in the pews, the same quiet pianos, the same lesson every week as every other Mormon church in the world. This was somewhere I belonged. I was a part of something, and it made my family proud. This was where I shined. I spent hours every day reading the scriptures and studying words of Mormon church leaders, reading motivational Mormon books, doing my Mormon homeschool program, preparing weekly spiritual lessons for my family, doing family history so we could baptize our ancestors to be Mormon with us. It was my job to get my family to heaven together. I never thought about whether I liked Mormonism. It was God's will, so that was it. And if I wanted my family to be together forever, I had to be the perfect Mormon. And I was. Soon enough, I was the one playing the organ and teaching the lessons at church and being the president of my group of teenagers. There were little things, though. I 
first felt betrayed, though I wouldn't have called it that then, by the church when I was 10. I was supposed to give a speech in front of all the other kids at church, but I'd forgotten, which was unlike me. I was a rule keeper. Eyes dotted and T's crossed. But this time, I'd forgotten. And Sister Cochran and Sister Jackman were not interested in my apologies. I needed to be taught a lesson. So they pulled me up to the front and made me speak. I couldn't help but stand there and cry. Lesson learned, I guess. Afterwards, I repented and prayed to never make a mistake again, but something about it stuck in my gut. Something was wrong. A few years later, I was in the church's young women's program. The, the boys got to raise money to go on an exciting backpacking trip, and the girls got to camp at the picnic ground and read scriptures. A church teacher called me in the spawn of Satan for asking an honest question. I was kicked out of a church dance by the DJ for wearing pants. But these things couldn't affect my faith. The church was true, even if the people weren't, after all. I was a Mormon, true blue, through and through, and none of these things were going to stop me. Right? this church if I heard it now for the first time? Would I miss it if I hadn't had it? What if my conscience tells me something different from your doctrine? By their fruits you shall know them, right? There are some fruits of this church that make me want to throw it all behind. I'm stuck in limbo. Do I stay because it's familiar? Because it's comfortable? Sometimes there is a difference of opinion as to what the facts really mean. A question that creates doubt in some can, after careful investigation, build faith in others. More cracks started appearing. But cracks can be overlooked like termites in a house until the foundation is all but gone and the walls come collapsing in. My faith was a given. It was a part of me. It was incomprehensible that I wouldn't believe. It was incomprehensible that the church could be wrong. Even entertaining that thought would bring the sky crashing down on my head. But underneath my feet, the foundation was beginning to shake. I'd been at BYU for four years, where every waking moment includes God. Wake up and say your prayers. Make sure you're dressed modestly so you don't get called into the honor code office. Opening prayer in each of your classes. Mondays are family evening with your assigned family of other students. Tuesdays are devotional, usually about the righteousness of marriage. Sundays, you drive to church with the Mormon Tabernacle Choir playing on the radio. And this was when I started to worry I might not really be a good Mormon. For in theory, this is what heaven was. A place filled with devout Mormons. But honestly, I had never been more unhappy. And I didn't know why. What was gnawing at me was too big to look in the eye. If I tried to see it, it would swallow me whole. So I prayed. I am sorry that I'm not good enough. Please make me better. Make me perfect. Make me devout. Then I got on a plane to the French Alps to teach English. And every minute, every mile moving me further away, I shifted in my seat, noticing a feeling of space. I noticed my breath full and slow, not tight and shallow. I was happier. The weight had lifted ever so slightly, but just enough for me to look back at all those cracks. The little things, 
was things that didn't quite add up. The public shaming. How differently men and women were treated. That women were excommunicated for asking why they couldn't have the priesthood. That until 1978, black people couldn't go to heaven. When I was told that my role was to be a wife and mother and that ballet was distracting me from that responsibility. But then finding out that my husband wouldn't even be my own because there was polygamy in heaven and if I didn't accept that, I couldn't stay in heaven. That I was supposed to campaign against gay marriage. That my grandmother wouldn't be with us in heaven because she was Catholic. And on and on and on. But I think there's some days here where we get a little weak we get a little willy nilly and say, you know, I'm going to pay for all this. Don't you dare pay for I am so furious with people who leave this church. And what on earth kind of conviction is that? This church means everything to me. Everything. And I'm not going to leave it. And I'm not going to let you leave it. But the cracks just kept widening. No matter how many scriptures I read, no matter how many prayers I said. And I started to see that the foundation of my life that I thought was built on faith was actually built on fear. And it was crumbling. This was not what I wanted. I did not want to leave. I did not want to bail. I did not want to find out that my entire life was a fucking lie. I hope that it's true. I fear that it's true. I believe in hope, but I live in fear. I save myself or I doom myself. If I wasn't afraid there might be an afterlife, I would kill myself to get out of this tug of war for my soul. I think eventually I will just break open. So before you make that spiritually perilous choice to leave, I encourage you to stop and think carefully before giving up. If you choose to become inactive or to leave the restored Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, where will you go? What will you do? Where will you go to find others who share your beliefs in, in personal, loving, heavenly parents? Where will you go to be taught about a savior who is your best friend? Where will you go to learn more about Heavenly Father's plan for our eternal happiness and peace? somewhere that I can live at peace with my conscience. If you're there, you know my heart. If you're there, you know why I can't stay. If you're there, I have to trust that that will 